Since the 1970s, global sperm counts have been dropping by about 1% per year, and that rate has doubled in recent decades. At the same time, global plastic production has exploded. Scientists now believe chemicals like phthalates and bisphenols found in food packaging, receipts, and even shower curtains are a major driver of this collapse in male fertility. And most men are being exposed to these chemicals every single day and have absolutely no idea. I'm Dr. Yvonne Burkhardt, a PhD toxicologist with decades of experience studying how everyday chemicals affect our health. This video breaks down the science behind hormone disrupting plastics and gives you clear, realistic steps to start reducing exposure today. Most people assume male fertility issues are rare or only affect older men, but the data tells a much scarier story. What if the real crisis isn't just individual, but global? Picture this, you and your partner are trying to conceive and all the tests come back normal, except that your sperm count is just barely above the threshold and no one explains why. You're left wondering what's actually going on. And as I said earlier, since the 1970s, sperm counts in men have dropped by over 50%. That's not just a statistical blip, it's a global, well-documented collapse. And the rate of decline isn't slowing down. In fact, it's getting faster. Meta-analyses now confirm this trend across multiple continents, not just in the West. And the consequences go beyond individual families. Fertility clinics are seeing rising demand. IVF is no longer a rare option. For many couples, it's becoming the default. If current trends continue, we could reach a point within a generation where conceiving naturally is no longer the norm. When sperm counts fall this fast across the population, fertility stops being an individual issue and becomes a systemic one, which means that even healthy men can be affected without warning. It's easy to blame lifestyle or diet, but if that were the only cause, we wouldn't see such a consistent global trend. So what else has changed? You might eat well, exercise, avoid smoking, yet still face unexplained fertility challenges. And that's where environmental exposure comes in. Starting around the 1950s, plastic production exploded. Today, we produce over 400 million tons of plastic each year, and many of these plastics contain additives designed to change their flexibility, durability, or appearance. Two major classes of these additives, phthalates and bisphenols, are now recognized as endocrine disruptors. That means they interfere with hormones, including testosterone and estrogen. The timing lines up almost too well as plastic use increased, sperm counts fell. Now this isn't a perfect correlation, but it's strong enough that leading scientists now list chemical exposures as a primary cause of male hormone disruption. Now you might be wondering, what do phthalates and bisphenols actually do to your body? So let's think about the last time you ate food that was kept in a takeout container or microwaved leftovers in plastic. If that container was soft and flexible, there is a good chance it was leaching phthalates directly into your food. Phthalates are added to plastics to make them soft and flexible. They're known as plasticizer chemicals. They're also in food packaging, vinyl flooring, shower curtains, inflatable toys, plastic wrap, and even some medical tubing. The problem is that they're not strongly bound to plastic and easily migrate or leach into your food and drinks. Mechanistically, phthalates suppress testosterone production. And this is especially damaging during critical windows of development, like in utero and during puberty. They also interfere with the enzymes and receptors that regulate how the body responds to testosterone. So even if your levels are normal, signaling can be disrupted. Long-term exposure to phthalates lowers sperm production, reduces fertility, and alters male reproductive development. While phthalates make plastics more flexible, they also suppress testosterone signaling, which means repeated exposure can slowly reduce sperm production over time. Now let's look at another class of plastic chemicals that affects the opposite side of the hormonal spectrum by mimicking estrogen. 
Today, we see a lot of products having a BPA-free label, but how much assurance does that really bring? It may come as a shock to you, but even with that BPA-free label, products may not be as safe as we're led to believe. Because the real question we need to be asking is what's actually replacing BPA in those BPA-free products? And are those chemical replacements any better? BPA-free products could be made with BPS or BPF, which are nearly identical chemicals that come with similar risks. BPA mimics estrogen and it can bind to estrogen receptors, thereby altering hormonal signaling, especially in sensitive tissues like the brain and testes. Bisphenols are commonly found in hard plastic, water bottles, canned food linings, and thermal receipts. These chemicals confuse the body's hormonal messaging system. In men, they disrupt the communication between the brain and the testes, the communication that regulates sperm production. And when estrogen mimicking chemicals interfere with that brain testes signaling, sperm production becomes less stable, which means everyday products can affect fertility in ways that you don't feel immediately. And yes, that is a cause for concern. So what if the biggest damage happens before a baby boy is even born? During pregnancy, most people don't think twice about using a scented lotion or microwaving their food in a plastic container. But those everyday exposures can add up and matter way more than we realize. Studies show that fetal exposure to phthalates can lead to what's known as phthalate syndrome. This includes measurable effects like shorter anogenital distance, smaller penis size at birth, and altered testicular development. Now here's a quick story. When I was in the lab, we did studies on male and female mice. And one of the measurements that we took was anogenital distance. And that was a strong predictor of how much an animal has or has not been feminized. And these changes might seem minor, but research shows that they strongly predict lower sperm counts and reduce fertility later in life. In other words, the foundation of male fertility is being shaped before birth, and most parents have no idea that it's happening. And these effects carry forward for decades, which means that fertility risk can be programmed even before you're ever aware of it. So even if you think you're being careful, exposure can happen in ways that are easy to overlook. So let's talk about some of the hidden sources. Imagine an average person's weekday routine. Deodorant in the morning, hot coffee from a paper cup, cologne after a shower with scented or fragranced shower gel, grabbing lunch in a plastic container, and grabbing receipts at checkout. That routine is adding up because heating food in plastic, especially oily or acidic foods, increases phthalate transfer directly into your meals. And thermal paper receipts, like the ones that you get at gas stations and grocery stores, are a major source of BPA and BPS. These compounds are absorbed through the skin, especially with repeated handling. And there was actually studies showing that the amount of BPA that transferred into a person's blood after handling receipts, especially if you used hand sanitizer or let's say hand cream was significantly more. So it's actually showing that just touching the receipt paper is transferring BPA into your blood at levels that are detectable. Personal care products are also a source because those that are labeled with fragrance often contain undisclosed phthalate mixtures because phthalates are used to help boost scent and make the scent last longer. So I used to think that a perfume or a product was quote unquote higher quality if the scent lasted longer without knowing that the entire time that effect was because of these phthalates. So once I realized that, I stopped using undisclosed fragrance products. Cologne, deodorant, lotion, are all potential sources of hormone disruptors in a man's routine. Here's a small shift. Try switching to fragrance-free products or those that are made with essential oils to impart scent. Opt for email or digital receipts. And if you can't avoid paper ones, wash your hands after touching them. And also don't throw them in the recycle bin. I know it's tempting because it's paper and we wanna do the right thing and recycle, but recycled receipt paper actually contaminates paper supply. And so then we end up seeing BPA in recycled paper products. Instead, just throw them in the regular trash. When exposure comes from these types of routine habits that we don't really think twice about, it basically becomes a constant stream, which means that more hormone disruption can start to build up in the background. 
And it's natural to think that regulations are protecting us, but behind the scenes, what is actually being done about these chemicals? Well, nearly 100 countries recently called for a global phase out of harmful plastic additives. But during the actual negotiations, no strong bans or enforcement mechanisms were included. So instead, we're seeing a wave of what's known as regrettable substitutions, which is when a chemical gets banned, such as BPA, or gets scrutinized, it's simply swapped for a nearly identical chemical. Because the point is, they still want to put chemicals in plastics and products that don't affect the performance, the cost, and basically how the plastic behaves in a product and so on. So basically they want to ban what the public is aware of, replace it with something nearly identical with a new name so that people might not catch on as quickly. And manufacturers are not required to list these additives clearly on packaging. So even the most informed consumers are flying blind at this point. While chemical regulations sound reassuring, without strong enforcement, this still allows harmful chemicals to stay in circulation, which means the burden of protecting ourselves is still on us as consumers, which is totally backwards. It's supposed to be the responsibility of the manufacturer. But I know it feels overwhelming, so let me help you take a deep breath. There are realistic high impact changes that you can make starting today. First, stop reheating and storing food or drinks in plastic. Second, use glass or stainless steel containers instead. Third, replace plastic water bottles with glass or stainless steel. Or if you really like plastic, then BPA or BPS free at least. But still, I would recommend glass or stainless steel. Next, choose personal care products that are truly free of fragrances or verified by reputable third parties. You can look for EWG verified as well. Refuse receipts when possible. And if you can't, wash your hands after you handle them. And remember, put them in the regular trash, not the recycle bin. These changes target the highest exposure sources first. And it's never about being perfect because we're surrounded by chemicals and we can't necessarily avoid them all. These small steps protect your hormone health where it matters the most. And by reducing the biggest exposure sources first, you're effectively lowering your cumulative hormone stress, which means that small changes can have outsized big effects on the long term, especially when it comes to fertility. And we know that individual action helps, but why does this keep falling on us consumers and what needs to happen next? The core issue is worldwide and systemic, which is endocrine disrupting chemicals are still allowed in consumer products by default. And BPA free means often just replaced with BPF. It's a marketing term and unfortunately it's pretty much a scam. And that's not safety, right? It's marketing, it's trickery, it's deceptive. And real change means pushing for bans on large classes of harmful additives, mandatory safety testing before products are released on the market, transparent labeling that lets consumers make informed choices. But your voice and your actions, people like to say vote with your dollars, this means supporting brands that are doing it right, that are not adding these chemicals to their products and also supporting policies that demand better for our health and for the planet. The personal choices that we make reduce risk, but systemic change prevents it from happening in the first place. And that's why pushing for safer materials and real regulation matters for not just your health, but also future generations. We just talked about how plastic chemicals are sabotaging male fertility, often in ways that start before birth. But what if the biggest risks to kids today aren't just hormonal and aren't even visible? In this next video, I'll show you the three hidden threats that are subtly changing your child's biology and the easiest swaps that protect them without overhauling your life. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next video.